have evidences, we do have some logic. Let me start with the words of the book of Acts. Men of Israel hear this word, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles. So the word attested means that this man proved himself. The man of miracles called Jesus Christ, he was not just a man. He was the Messiah, waited for the Israel people and he proved himself as God because he had done wonders, signs which God did through him in your midst. In another way, in the Gospel of St. John, the, John said, Truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book but these are written that you may believe. So simply, the miracles, the wonders done by Christ prove that he is the expected Messiah. So our belief is not just a blind faith. No, it's simply founded upon logic, reasoning, and evidence. Because miracles prove that Jesus is God. So the Son of God and that believing you may have life in his name. Also the born blind man who was very simple man but he made it in a very logic statement. He said it this way. He was speaking to the Pharisee, to the leaders of the altar. He said, since the world began it has been unheard of that anyone opened the eyes of one who was born blind. So simply he is saying, as far as this man could open my eyes, could create new eyes for me, I was a born blind person, so he is not just a man. And he is definitely a man of God, or he may be the Logos incarnate. Christ said once, Though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the Father is in me. Some people may say, let God prove himself by doing things. Actually, God did. When he came to our land, he proved himself by doing thousands of miracles before the eyes of thousands of people, but still they did not believe in him. So when people say, just let him prove his divine nature, his existence by doing things, he did. But people did not believe. So don't follow the word saying that he did not prove himself with no evidence. Actually, he did. When Thomas had his doubts, God did not tell him just Believe in me blindly. That's the face you should follow. Actually, Christ appeared to him. And he said, reach your finger here. Look at my hand. Reach your hand here. Put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. So again, we are not speaking about a blind face. Our face could be reasonable. Our faith does not stand against any logic or science. Uh, remember the story of Lazarus. Lazarus died and he was buried in the tomb and he stayed four days and hundreds of people went to his house, you know, trying to comfort his sisters. Everyone was very sure that Lazarus died. After four days, hundreds of people went and sat down with Lazarus. They saw him. They touched him. They, was, they were very sure that Lazarus rose from the dead. But though, even after this very clear miracle, you all know that the Pharisee and the chief priest gathered the council and said, What shall we do? Simply the answer, you should believe. If you are sure that Lazarus rose from the dead by the order of Jesus the Nazareth, you know, simply you have to believe. But the answer, this man works many signs, but they did not believe in him. 
So don't go with the idea if there is any proof, evidence, clear miracle, people will believe. Actually, people do not want to believe. And God proved himself by many ways, but if people do not want to believe, they won't believe. Atheism is a blind face. Simply, science can never prove that God does not exist. When you speak to anyone saying that science proved that there is no God, just ask him back. How? Tell me how science proved that there is no God. There is no answer because science could never prove that there is no God. Again, logic is completely incompatible with the absence of God. You need to deny your mind, you need to deny any logic if you want to say that God is not there. But if you have any kind of reasoning, you should believe that there is kind of a God, there is a designer, there is a creator, who is all with them. You may know that in science they sometimes use the word control trials. In order to prove anything, usually they use kind of tests and trials and they put them under some kind of control. So that's one of the most important approach to science with observation and interpretation. Okay, let's study some of the trials in the Bible. You know the trial of these three young men with Daniel. They had this problem because they did not want to break the rule of being fasting as do people living away from the country. So they said, please test your servants. Just test for 10 days. And you all know after these 10 days, they became the best of everyone. So by the test, they proved that their belief in fasting and prayer was really evident. Also, in the time of Elijah, Elijah, the great prophet, he made the test. He said it this way, therefore let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves, cut it in pieces, lay it on the wood, put on fire. I will prepare the other bull and lay it on the wood, but put no fire. Then you call on the name of your gods, I will call on the name of my God. You all know the story. And the test became positive. And God proved that Elijah is right. And the fire came from heaven, just as an answer for the prayer of Elijah. So simply when you study the history of Christianity, you may see what exactly the Christian faith done in the lives of the people. And also when you study the movement of atheism in the last hundred years, you could see the disasters and the problems happened with the hands of those who believe that there is no God. Hundred millions of people were killed when people ignored, denied the existence of God. But Christian faith could change the hearts of millions of people. And many good civilizations came above the Christian values. Again, God may tell us, just test me. Try me now in this. God said so. So you may use this way. If you want to know God, why don't you try him? Try to believe in his promise. Try to follow his word and see how would your life change. Try me now and this, say the laws of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So again, it, you can try God in this because your face is not blind. Your face is reasonable and also According to control trials, you can say, yes, I believe in God. God is really existing, exist, and he is also responding to my prayer. Christ used to use the, the logic in his conversation. 
when he spoke to the people around him in time of the of healing the paralyzed man he asked them a question in a very reasonable way because when he said for the man that your sins are forgiven people did not believe it because they couldn't see what happened so he asked them which is easier to say to the paralyt paralytic your sins are forgiven or to say arise take up your bed so he's speaking very reasonable and after this sentence he proved his word because he gave him the healing power and the man could move on and walked away so he asked the people many questions to check their minds so Christ never ignored the work the function of a mind we need to think and when we think we will know God better so believing in God is not standing against thinking against using your mind to believe when they accused the lord being the head of the kingdom of devil or like an archi devil you know he simply answered in a very logical way that you know if a house is divided against itself that house cannot stand so if he is just a leader of devils and he is casting away his his members his house you know will be divided so christ spoke to our minds christ respected our reasoning christ made use of logic christ did not ignore any fact or science but you know we need to believe in order to understand um this word is given in mark chapter 6 after the miracle of the five loaves and two fish you know they moved in the boat and after a few days they had some hard time because they thought that they do not have enough food and at what night they were very much worried because they faced death christ said this sentence they do not, they had not understood about the loaves because if if they understand what happened exactly in the miracle of the five loaves they can believe in christ as god controlling everything that's logic reasonable the one who made it this way he could do anything so simply the loaves the baskets were a proof of his power and love and that's the way god is using to prove himself and to support our faith in the book of hebrews saint paul said by faith we understand people may think that christian never think never understand they do not use their minds they do not respect science they do not want to use the logic no definitely not we believers faithful people of god we understand god by faith we believe in him and we use our minds to understand his ways so the people of god the men of faith are always reasonable and they were very logic and they refused to believe like blind atheism so the knowledge of god is always clear but people may not want to know god they refute the knowledge of god in the psalm chapter 14 number 14 the fool has said in his heart there is no god it's not the wise it's not the scientist it's not the one of logic the man of logic no the fool will say in his heart there is no god so whenever you deal with anyone says there is no god that's not a scientific man or a logic person or an any kind of wise person he is just a fool we need to exercise that we need to speak in a logic way scientific way to prove our faith 
and we need to master how to respond to doubts and lies. And I recommend you study some Christian apologetics because we need to speak to our generation in a reasonable way, in a very scientific way. Also, we need to experience God in our life. It's not about telling people, I just believe in God. No, I have to experience, to feel. God is there, God is replying, responding to me. I know he is there, he is beside me, and I could feel it in many situations. Glory to God, amen. So I'll start answering your questions, but I want to give you another um, tertila. Please sing with me. Dear Lord, glorify your name so that all the peoples proclaim. May you always open your eyes and may the Spirit make us wise, may you always open your eyes and may As you listen to your people sigh, give us the Lord from your deep faith Let us see that you're here to save Walk with us, drive away the strife, give us. Walk with us, drive away the strife, give us assurance as we part. Amazing is your love, so deep the Lord, the glory part. Your name, so that all the peoples proclaim. May you always open your eye. May your spirit make us wise. May you open your eyes and may your spirit make us one as you listen. To people sad, let's leave the pot and quit our blocks. Let's beg the Lord and preach His blood. He came to win, He took us in. He came to win, He took us in. He rose from death to eternal life, the Lord of glory. Peoples proclaim, may you always open your eyes. May you always open your eyes and may your spirit make us wise as you listen to your people sighing. I do not understand the Bible. How cannot you teach me an easy way? The easiest way is to start reading the Bible regularly. 
When you read like a chapter, start by the gospel, St. Mark, St. Matthew, St. Luke, and St. John, and try to read the same chapter two, three times in the same sitting. So this will help you to understand like 70% of the content of the chapter. If you have time and want to understand more, you may go to um, Google some commenters on the same chapter. In the sites of the Orthodox Christian churches, you may find explanations and commenters on the Gospels. So, by reading and frequent reading and just trying to understand, you will get many things. So you have to be regular. On daily basis, you start reading chapter by chapter. And while reading the Bible, you may ask yourself questions. What did I get from this chapter? What would I do if I am in the place of the Lord? Or what would I do if I am in the place of this man or that woman? So by imagining this dialogue in your mind, this will help you to get the meanings of the Bible. There is another way. You choose one verse and you write it down on your notebook. So on daily basis, you choose one verse for each day. By doing this, after many months, you will be, you know, kind of an expert in the Bible. You know many verses and you understand lots of meanings in the Bible. Actually, the Bible in the church, we use the Bible as kind of eating and drinking. So it's like a meal. You eat the Word of God. You digest the Word of God. So it's not just reading. When you read and understand and pray with the Word of God, now you can enjoy feeling the work of the Holy Spirit in your heart. I love watching you on CYC, can you make more programs? Thank you, <laughs> thank you for the comment. Um, I'm happy with the work of the CYC channel actually because it represents the, the, the mind of the Coptic Church in English, speaking to millions of people in the whole world, preaching the word of God in a very orthodox way helping many people to understand the meaning of life, the value of life, the mission in life, helping many people to come to the knowledge of Christ and to enrich them with the meanings in the Bible and in the church. So I find the CYC channel is a great channel, great service. I wish everyone can um, watch them. How can I stop porn? No need. Thank you, Habib. <laughs> okay. How can I stop porn? Porn is about watching bad things in the, in the social media, on the mobile phone, on the cell phone, or the laptop. So for anyone who is exposed to things, bad things, bad pictures, you know, that's a sin. Because this exposure to bad things will, you know, fill his mind with bad pictures. And he cannot pray, he cannot respect people. And porn is kind of addiction. And actually, it's a big sin. It needs repentance. In order to stop porn, you need to admit that it's a big sin and you need to repent. You need to go to your father of confession. And you need to pray fervently. Do many matanyat. Try to pray many psalms. Try to stop yourself because it's killing the purity of your heart. It pushes you into darkness of devil. And all those who are addict to porn will end up in depression, in an anxiety, in bad feelings, and they may lose their eternity. So you need to fight it. I ask your father of confession for help. 
But for those who spend more time in praying, in Bible reading, in the church activities, they can easily get out of this problem. How can I stop dating? I'm 14 years old. I know it's wrong. Thank you, you know it's wrong. Thank God. You know, to stop dating is simply to stop yourself from dating. So you have to take a decision and stop this thing because it's not the time. Um, maybe when you are in the university or after university, it's the time to date someone in order to know whether he is the right partner for the future marriage. But you may know that dating in our church worldview is different from dating you know, in the American um, way. Because dating, according to our Christian culture, Christian teaching, it's simply to know someone, to pray, to ask the trusted people whether this guy would be the right person for me to marry or not. So it had nothing to to do with sexual relation or physical touches or lusts. No, it had nothing to do with this. You all know that the only uh, sanctified um, Christian physical relation is into the Christian marriage. When God put his hand on the husband and wife, from this minute they are one. Before this minute they are not one. And they cannot live together. Um, when you give your heart to many people, actually, one day you may feel insecure because you gave your emotions to many ones. So when it comes to your partner one day, you will feel like you are not honest because you offered your feelings to many people before this minute. So better to keep your feelings to the right partner. I hate my sister. <laughs> Your sister is is good. <laughs> ah, okay. Okay. Someone uh, asked me to show you um, a video. <laughs> Allow me to show you this one. Just watch, please. I need the comments of the young people.
Okay. Uh, do you think this young sister hated her sister? Actually, she did not. But the monster, the devil, wanted to push her to hate her sister. But she found out that she loves her sister. And even if her sister is kind of um, excellent in things, she is also different and excellent in other things. But she couldn't live with the idea of hating her sister. She felt like in dark side, she felt insecure. And when she expressed his love, her love to her sister, she overcame the bad feelings. So when you feel any hatred things, you need to fight, you need to pray, you need, you need to ask God for help. Because you cannot live your life if you fail to love your people, especially your friends, your sisters, brothers, father and mother. So you need to fight, you need to pray, you need to stop the bad thoughts and the bad feelings. And sometimes we may feel like hating people who never, you know, attacked us or hurt us in any way. So it's all about our heart, our feeling. We need to change, we need to work on our feeling. Another question. Um, how was God made? Like how did everything start? Simply the question, the first one is not correct because if God was made, so he is not God. God made everything, but he was never made. He was always there. So being the Almighty before all ages, so he had no beginning. So the question is not correct. Simply God created everything. If he was just made, he was a creature. But being the creator, so you cannot ask, who created the Creator? He created everything, but no one could create Him. And He is like created, so He's not God. So saying God meaning that He is the Creator, not created. So He started everything. When He allowed for ages to come, He started creating the universe, then he ended up creating man on his image. I do not like to confess. Can you help me? Confession will give you three major gifts in your life. The first gift is to have a father, a spiritual father. It's a great gift to have some spiritual father caring for you, praying for you, helping you, giving you hope, advising you. So having a good father, presenting the fatherhood of God, it's a great gift. Another gift of confession, you feel the absolution, you feel the forgiveness, you feel the freedom from all sins. So it's another gift. The third gift, given in the sacrament of confession is the guidance. You will be guided how to live with God, how to live according to his commandment, how to, how to catch the kingdom of heaven. So you need to confess. And when you start confessing, do not try to defend yourself. You are just like saying what exactly happened. And you need not to go into details. You're just saying, I have done this bad thing. And don't be shy, don't worry. Your father of confession always listen to bad things. I mean confessions. And he is your father. He is in this minute forgiving you, loving you. So don't worry. Um, can I date as a teenager? Um, it's not recommended. Simply because you cannot make sure of your decision. Your emotions will change with the days. In the time of being 13, 14, 15 years old, you cannot commit yourself. You cannot 
make sure of the future plan. So as far as dating is the first step of marrying someone, so it's not the time. Just wait for the perfect time in order to choose the right partner and to be committed to this relation. Um, how can I answer my teacher when he say evolution proves no God? Just ask him how. If an, any teacher say evolution proves that there is no God, simply ask him how. There is no answer. Evolution could never prove that there is no God. Simply evolution may prove that some, you know, some of the uh, species came out of, of the same species but, but with different, you know, things within the same species. That's all what they got, what we call sometimes microevolution. That within the species of dogs, there were like variations with the generations. That's accepted scientifically. But there is no proof that dogs are related to reptiles, to snakes, to fish, to the elephants, to man. There is no proof in this. And also, even if there is any kind of relations, who started this? Who started life? Who started the first life? Again, evolution had no answer. So simply, evolution is a weak theory. So do not go with the idea that evolution proved that there is no God. Actually, nothing like this in science. Another question. My mom is always telling me that I'm not pretty like other girls. Wow. Send me your mom, please. I want to speak to her. Um, That's not good from your mother. But again, you have to be confident. The beauty of any girl is not in her face or her body. It's the beauty of the Holy Spirit. It's the beauty of God, you know, dwelling into her heart. The Word of God always speaking about the inner beauty. There is some kind of inner beauty. Like the beauty of Saint Mary, we never speak about her face, her body. We are speaking about our queen, the very beautiful queen, Saint Mary, because her heart is really precious, kind, simple, very pure, wise. So having all these virtues, you will be really pretty. So again, you need to be confident and tell your mom, I'm okay because I love God and I believe in Him and He could see me beautiful. Um, I get so bored from long liturgies. <laughs> we'll try to pray short liturgies for you. But again, if you understand the meaning of the Odess of the Mass, if you pray the songs of the liturgy, if you focus on the meanings, if you listen to many explanations and commentaries on the liturgies, you will enjoy praying. So try to share in praying, in praising God. Try to understand what's happening in the liturgy because this will help you to enjoy the minute of liturgy. Also, standing before God, think of the angel, think of the future heavenly life, think of praying of, uh, for others because many people are in troubles. So you may think in many good um, aspects in life, so this will help you to pray better. Um, how can I respond to my friend when he says, I'm gay? Simply, listen Habibi, simply we respect everyone, we love everyone. So anyone tells you that I'm a gay, okay, you will respect him, but he cannot be a friend actually. 
you will deal perfectly with him like any of the colleague in the school or the university but he, he cannot be an intimate friend because he took some way away from God so having close friends you have to think in the same way you have the same vision in life you need to know God more you need to love him you know you need to have a mission in life so for a gay or lesbian or any one according to the Bible this is simply a sin for life and we all sinners everyone is doing sin but again we are always admitting that there is sin in our life so we are repenting so if he feels like guilty and he needs to overcome this you might help him and tell him you need to go to your father of confession and you need to repent and this is may not be good for you to stay as gay but if you feel like he is okay with what he says so you just respect him and try to choose other friends why Abuna goes around the altar many times during liturgy simply Abuna is offering the incense and he is praying many prayers while moving around in the altar and by this movement you know he is like covering the whole world with the blessings of the prayers Saint Mary and the saints and the incense you know stands for the presence of the Lord covering the needs of the whole world so this this kind of moving in the altar presenting the coverage of the blessings everywhere and for everyone if God exists and he is a good God why does he allow bad things to happen like kids dying or diseases okay that's a good question God is good and God is almighty God exists God can control things but yes he allows for some bad things to happen first of all when he created man there was no nothing called bad thing but man chose the bad side men through Adam and Eve choose to break the commandments since that time you know corruption happened so sin death corruption entered our life before this minute there is nothing called bad there is there were no sinful actions or disease or disasters or death the second point God allows because he gave men the freedom so according to the free will of men men choose to do bad things again at the will of God and being a very kind father very kind God he respects the free will of men that's why many bad things happen because of the free will of men again if you was you speaks about the diseases and things not related to the free will of men look to the future life according to the corruption happened in this life Christ came and offered another life eternal life next life life after this life and this coming life is free from all corruption all the diseases all deaths all the disasters all cancer all all sorts of bad things so we Christians looking forward to the new life to the eternal life waiting for the next life and that's the promise of Christ he did not promise to free this life from from you know suffering that's why he came and he suffered with us he died on the cross he was killed to prove that he is sharing our suffering and promising us with a new life free from all these so simply we are the source of bad things and God may allow this because we need to think of the future life not this life
how to become friends with the children I serve? Uh, that's a question from a servant. Uh, listen more to the, to the children. Do not instruct them much. Do not say no and yes all the time. Do this, do not do this. And try to share them their, you know, um, games, their whatever they like. Spend quality time and help them to know how to pray, how to read the Bible, how to solve their problems. And let them share in managing your class and, you know, putting the program for the class because they are not young children. They want to lead. They want to have their opinion. We need to respect them. Me and my friends get mad at each other and I get sad. What should I do? You need to train yourself on self-control. Being mad at your friend or anyone, you know, it needs kind of self-discipline. You need to control your temper. And when you pray, you will have this skill in your life. You will control yourself. If you get kind of excited, you know, mad at anyone, just do not speak. Just try to pray in your heart to stop your anger. And try to speak in a good way. And when you confess, asking God for help, you will have this help from God. The last question, how to deal with social anxiety? What should you do if you are feeling depressed and have no friends to talk to? Our king is the king of peace. Our Lord Jesus Christ is really the king of peace. And he is offering his peace to anyone coming to him. So when you pray, you will be given the peace of heaven. And the peace of heaven is really great. And it overcome all depression and anxiety feelings. So you need to know how to pray. When you pray from your heart, when you pray Psalms, when you do Mataniyat, when you come to the church, when you focus on praying, you will feel this peace of God. Also, if you don't have friends, you still have the chance to get friends from the church. And you know the saints used to have other saints as friends. So many young people may have Abu Sifin like a friend, St. George like a friend, Malak Mikhail like a friend. So you may have these friends in your um, in your life. Again, if you want to control your temper, you need to read the Bible and to keep in your mind some of the commandments related to this anger problem. Thank you for your time, my dear friends. And uh, let's pray together just a few minutes and then you go for a dinner. Tfadalun Salli.
and granted the grace even remaining from your deal we are gladly in need for your mercy we plead and grant us the grace even remaining from your deal oh Lord don't listen oh Lord forgive me oh Lord don't listen you know I will let oh Lord You are the righteous for the sin of the weak. Returning to your pastures, tears rolling down the cheeks. None but you are the righteous for the sin of the weak. Oh Lord, oh listen, oh Lord, forgive me. for all the blessings in our life. Thank you for allowing us to listen to your word. Please enlighten our mind, purify our hearts, help us to love you from all the heart, all the mind, all the power. Help us to love everyone around. Teach us how to live our life according to your will. Through the intercession of Saint Mary and all the saints, Accept our prayer when we pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespass as we forgive those who trespass. But deliver us from the evil one through Jesus. The power, the glory forever. Amen. أمضوا بالسلام سلام الرب يكون معك تفضل <تصفيق>